All right, guys, let's do this. We are going to start polar graphs, which is honestly, polar coordinates is something that I really, really enjoy. Usually I'll teach this in a pre-calc class, but in a, like a ton of time. But converting back and forth. Now, everything we're going to do in this um, unit is no calculus. It's just polar stuff. Okay, learning how this works, right? Okay, you guys, cool. This is a polar grid. Polar points are written in... You know, as opposed to, okay, so rectangular coordinates, we call them, like the coordinate system we've always used, the X, Y, okay, um, are X, Y, polar coordinates are R theta, where R represents the radius from the center, and theta represents the opening of the angle, just like on our unit circle where we started 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, okay? So here's how we plot polar points. All right, so let's take this first point. This is the point 3 and pi over 6. So what I do is I go to pi over 6, all right, which is this one right here, 30 degrees, that's pi over 6, and I go out one, two, three circles. So it's a radius of three on the line pi over six. That's where that point would be. Okay? All right, nice. Then I've got, let's see, for B, it's a radius of four on pi. So I go out to where pi is, that's right here. Okay, so this is pi. And I just go out four circles. One, two, three, four. And that's my point. All right. Um, okay, now, when you have a negative angle, a negative theta, it just goes in the reverse direction. All right. So it just goes to negative 5 pi over 6. Okay, now, remember, you guys, all the way around is 6 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 would be right here, negative 5 pi over 6. And then I go out three circles. Okay? So negative angles just go the opposite way. Now, what happens if I have a negative R? A negative radius. Kind of doesn't make sense because, like, if R is negative, right? Well, here's what you do. Okay, we're going to go out to 3 pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2 right here. And if it was a positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, I would go out on that. It's a negative 2, I go backwards. Okay? So each of these points can actually have multiple names. Another way of saying a radius of negative 2 at 3 pi over 2, it's the exact same thing as saying <coughs> it's at a radius of positive 2 at pi over 2, because it's pointing towards pi over 2 and it's going forward. Okay? So any point you can write multiple different ways. All right, in multiple different ways. All right, guys, here we go. So, it says write the rectangular point in polar form such that. So this is the point x, y, okay? We go over here. So you guys know in rectangular, it's just like the normal plots that we use, all right? And so this point is saying, okay, go left one, and go up root three, which is like uh, a little bit between one and two. Okay, so I could have made that a little bigger, but there you go. So I'm going left one, up root three, okay? So first of all, guys, how can I figure out what the radius of this point is gonna be in polar form? Because in polar form, what we do is we end up having, you know, these circles, oops, these like concentric circles so that we can see where my radius is going to be, right? Okay? And so how can I figure out what that radius is? Well, I can just use a Pythagorean theorem, right? I can go, okay, I can go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So c squared is 4, so c is 2, okay? 
and then that's going to go that's going to be my radius so my radius is 2 now what angle is this at well you know if you notice on this triangle this is actually a 30 60 90 triangle because the ratios of 30 60 90 are 1 root 3 and 2 and the 1 is across from the 30 the root 3 is across from the 60 the 2 is across from the 90 well this is 60 uh, and it, going all the way around would be 180 and if I back that up by 60 that angle right there would be 120 okay now we usually use radians so instead of 120 I should have used Let's see, this is like pi over 3, so 120 is like 2 pi over 3, okay? And it doesn't matter, in polar, like you could say, you know, theta is 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3, which is what we're going to use most likely, all right? Okay, so check it out. To write this with a positive radius, so that's going to be 2, and a positive angle, it's the point 2, 2 pi over 3, okay? Now, that exact same point, but, and it's like, so it's like right here, yeah? Okay, so it's at an angle of two pi over three and it goes out two. I want to write it as a positive angle, so it is still, or a positive radius is going out two, but a negative angle. Well, you guys, what that means is I've got to measure this backwards that way, okay? Now, this is two pi over three as a negative angle. Well, that goes to negative three and it goes past by one. So that's going to be around negative four pi over three. And negative four pi over three and two pi over three are the exact same angle. Okay? So that's what I would get for that one. Now, let's write it as a negative radius. Okay? A negative radius and a positive angle. All right. I still want it out here. Well, if I'm writing it as a negative radius, that means the angle I'm actually writing it towards is that one, okay? And if this angle over here is 2 pi over 3, which means it's left pi over 3 right there, this angle right here is negative pi over 3. Oh, but it's set as a positive angle, my bad. So instead of writing it as negative pi over 3, I would go all the way around and actually write this as 5 pi over 3. So it's 5 pi over 3, okay, which goes, 5 pi over 3 is like right here, guys. And then a negative angle, and it goes back to there, okay? Now, a negative radius and a negative angle to get to here. Well, I'll need to go down there, so that's a negative 2 radius to go backwards, and a negative pi over 3. Okay, so those are four representations of the exact same point. All right. Okay, so let's talk about now how to convert back and forth a little bit like quicker than what we did there. Okay, so you guys, we kind of talked about like with this triangle here, we talked about in a um, rectangular form, that's just X and Y. And then if I do the Pythagorean theorem and it's X squared plus Y squared, it's gonna equal this side. Well, that's just the radius squared, okay? So that's how you can convert that way is x squared plus y squared is r squared. That's how we can find r. Then in order to find this angle, so there's a couple different ways that you can do it, but the easiest way to set up is with tangent. Tangent's opposite over adjacent. So tangent is y over x. Now this is how you convert to Um, rectangular to polar. Okay? That's how I convert a rectangular point to a polar point. So, um, that would be going this way. So let's go ahead and look at number four. Alright, we'll do that in a second. Alright. Okay, a rectangular point. First I do, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so 9 plus 9 equals r squared, so 18 is r squared. Now, if I take the square root of that, all right, I get plus or minus, and then, I mean, you can get a square root 18, or you can say, well, I know that that's 9 times 2, 
right? And the square root of nine is three. So it's plus or minus three root two. Now, why did we get a plus or minus? Well, you just saw up here that I can write my radius as a positive or a negative depending on which angle I use, right? So that's the first thing. Then I come over here and I go, okay, the uh, tangent of theta is y over x. So where does tangent equal negative one? Well, if you look on your chart, you guys, tangent equals negative one. Well, tangent equals one at the pi over fours. So tangent could equal negative one. It could be like pi over four. It could be three pi over four. It could be uh, five pi over four, or it could be seven pi over four. And that depends on whether I choose a positive or a negative radius, right? It could be any of those. So how do I decide? Well, the last step, what you gotta do is just really, really quickly sketch that point. Now, if I sketch that negative three, so like left three up three is that point right there. Okay, so the standard name for that point, the standard name would be with a positive radius, three rad two, and a positive angle. And since that's in quadrant three, three pi over four. But there are other ways to name it, okay? The other ways to name it would be three rad two and negative five pi over four. I could do negative three rad two and negative pi over four or negative three red two and seven pi over four. So you just have to see like where it puts itself, okay? Like what quadrant it's in and stuff and match that up, all right? Now going the other way around, let's say I knew r and theta and I had to find x, okay? So check this out. If the uh, sine of theta, right, is opposite over hypotenuse, then y is r sine theta, okay? Uh, if the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, then x is r cosine theta, all right? Which is it. And that is what we're going to use to convert when we have a polar and we're trying to turn into rectangular, okay? I think this way is a little bit easier, I guess, but here's how you do it. To go from, this is a polar point, r theta, and I wanna to go to a rectangular point, so I go like this. X is r cosine theta, so that's gonna be two cosine pi. And if you remember from the unit circle, the cosine of pi is negative one. And then y is r sine theta. So that's two sine pi. And if you remember from the unit circle, the sine of pi is zero. So this converts to the point negative two zero. And it's actually pretty easy to see that that's the same point, right? So like in Desmos, you can actually get a polar graph in here, okay? And like the point um, two comma, I think this will graph in polar, I'm just gonna try it here. Two pi. Oh, I didn't wanna graph my point for me. That's okay, it's like right here. So you can see it's out at pi and it's out two. And then if I have the point um, negative two comma zero, that's like right there. Okay, so you can see it's facing pi and it goes out two. So those are, you know, equivalent points on a rectangle on a polar. Okay, now that we have these conversion equations, these are gonna be really important. You wanna memorize these, all right? But you can really always just kind of go back to this triangle to remember, but you do wanna memorize those. Now we can convert things back and forth. Now check this out. Okay, on <coughs> Desmos, <coughs> like y equals four, I can graph that. Let's take a look, sorry. <laughs> At the line, you can graph this on the graph. Exactly like two, y equals four. So that's a horizontal line at four, right? Okay, let's look at this. We know that y is r sine theta. So that's the conversion. Now, typically we solve for r just so that we can put it into our calculators. So r is four divided by sine theta. 
or we can say it's for cosecant theta, right? Because we know that the reciprocal sign is cosecant. All right. Now we're going to take a minute and look at our graphing calculators. Do you guys have your graphing calculators? And you want to pull those out? Up here. Okay. So in class we talked about um, parametric mode, which is the x1, y1. Now we're going to go ahead and go into polar mode. And what you do is you'll note when you do that, you'll notice it just says r equals. Right? So if I do r equals 4 divided by sine, and then when I push this x button here, you guys, it automatically puts it in theta. Okay? Automatically puts it in theta. Now, the same thing is true with parametric, like my window, this is going 0 to 2 pi, so this is like pretty good. All right? Um, I probably need to make my x min and my x max a little different. So let's just reset it back. Uh, before was it negative 2.5? 2.5. I'm just going to go negative 10 to positive 10. Uh, negative 10 to 10. And then same thing here. I'll just go negative 10 to positive 10. Okay? If I look at that, what did that graph? A straight line, which was the same thing as y equals 4 when I graphed it over here. Okay, that's not that exciting. So let's look at a different one. All right, 3x minus y plus 2 equals 0. Let me go ahead and graph that in rectangular, okay? 3x minus y plus 2, 3x minus y plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so that's a graph passing through that point. I mean, it's a linear straight line, okay? You can't really see it, this watermark is There we go, 3x minus y plus 2. Make that line. Okay, let's turn this in rectangular to polar. Let's go ahead and let's call x r cosine theta. Let's call y r sine theta um, plus 2 equals 0. Well, if I want to solve for r, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract the 2 over. That equals negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and factor out an r. So 3 cosine theta minus sine theta equals negative 2. And divide that over. So if I neg do negative 2 divided by 3 cosine theta minus sine theta. Okay? That's what this equation is. Now we're going to go graph this in our graphic calculator and hopefully it will look like that. Okay? Alright. So in my graphic calculator, let me clear that. Let me go alpha fraction, and then I'm going to go, it was uh, negative 2 over 3 cosine theta minus sine theta. Dang, look at that. It's a line going through the point at 2. That's pretty cool. Okay. This is not really what polar is useful for. We can graph lines. Lines are not a big deal to graph, you know? Things that are more difficult to graph are like circles, ellipses, stuff like that, okay? X squared minus, X squared plus Y squared is minus 2X is 0. Okay, so check this one out. X squared plus Y squared minus 2X equals 0. That's a little circle on its side over there between 0 and 2. Okay? Makes a little circle. Well, let's see if I can convert this into a polar equation. And polar equations are actually really, really nice. I don't know. See how right here it says x squared plus y squared? Without even putting in like r cosine theta, r sine theta, so much easier. x squared plus y squared is r squared. That was just one of my conversions there. Okay? And then x is r cosine theta. All right? And what we could do to solve for r, now normally I would say like, okay, we factor out an r. And we get two choices, r equals zero. But you guys, r equals zero is nothing. r equals zero means there's nothing there, the radius of zero. So you can kind of just get rid of that. Or r minus two cosine theta equals zero. So r is two cosine theta, right? Now check this out when I do this on my graphing calculator. Okay, so when I go into R 
is 2 cosine theta. Okay, now remember what we want it to look like. This made a circle 0 to 2. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this. Let's go. Now a lot of people look at it and they're like, Mitchell, that's not a circle, that's an ellipse. It's only an ellipse because your calculator is graphing in widescreen, okay, because it's a little bit skewed out there, so you can fix that with the window. Or you can go into zoom and do zoom square. What zoom square does is it takes your widescreen calculator and turns it into uh, more like so it actually looks like a circle. That's what zoom square does. Okay? Anyways, let's see here. Back to, no, back to this. Okay, so that's how I can convert those over. Now, let's convert the other way, polar to rectangular, okay? And I'm going to show you, like, like graphs for these as well. Okay, polar is, r is negative 2. Let's go ahead and do that in polar. You guys might be able to think about what that would be. It basically is just saying a radius of negative 2. I'm going to put this on here so you guys can. Remember we talked about how to change this over so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to make it go by a step of like 0.01. I'm going to make it go slower so you can see it better. Okay. Oof, too slow. <laughs> Let's try that again. Stop it. Oh, gosh. It's like an off. Okay. Let's go by, instead of 0 0.01, let's go by 0 0.05. That's probably good. There we go. Okay. It's graphing a circle, r equals negative 2. Okay, now most of these, when we convert polar to rectangular, you guys, what we really want is we actually would like to get these to say r squared. Because r squared is x squared plus y squared, and that's what I'm trying to use. I don't want to get like square roots in there and stuff. So I want to get them to say r squared. Now, there are two ways to get something to say r squared, okay? This is going to sound a little bit weird, but just check this out. If I have like r equals 4, there are two ways for me to get r squared. I could square both sides, and it could say r squared is 16, right? That's one way to get that to say r squared. Or I could multiply both sides by r. And that also could turn that into r squared. So depending on the situation, sometimes I want to square it, and sometimes I want to multiply both sides by r. And you'll kind of just see which one's better in each case. In this question, I am actually going to go ahead and just square both sides. So I get r squared is 4. And then right as soon as I get to r squared, I can replace that with x squared plus y squared is 4. Now, we can look at what the graph of that is like on Desmos, okay? x squared plus y squared is 4. Well, look at that. It is a circle with a radius of 2. And when I graphed that on my graphing calculator in polar form, it was a circle with a radius of 2, okay? So that polar equation is the same as saying x squared um, plus y squared equals 4, okay? Now, this, I do not want to square both sides. If I do, I get 9 cosine squared, and that's like not a thing. So I actually do not want to square both sides on this. What I actually want to do is multiply by r. So here's why. I get r squared is 3r cosine theta, and then I can turn that into x squared plus y squared, and I can turn that into 3x. And that's my rectangular form, okay? And again, I could graph the polar form, I could graph the rectangular form, and you guys would see that it's the same thing, okay? Now, over here, r equals 2 cosecant. Well, first of all, I'm not really used to using, like, cosecants in this stuff. So I'll go ahead and rewrite that as 2 over sine. Now, this time, I actually don't want it to say r squared, because if I multiplied both sides by r, that doesn't help me at all. If I square both sides, that doesn't help me at all. But look at what I can do. I can take this sign and move it over, right? So I can write this as r sine theta equals 2. And then what's r sine theta? 
That was just Y. Equals two. So Y equals two is a horizontal line. So when I graph R equals two cosecant, I should just be getting a horizontal line at two. Right? We could do that real quick over here. We can go Y equal or R equals two cosecant, which is two divided by sine, and I get a horizontal line. Okay, graphs are kind of weird, but that's what I get. All right. Uh, super fun. Okay, we're going to look at sketching polar graphs. And it says, you know, use a calculator with those in fold. Oh, gosh, we might just use a calculator on all of it. We'll see. Okay, because I don't know how much plotting of polar you're going to have to do, you know, um, on the AP test without a calculator. Anyway, so let's look at this first one, two cosine theta. All right. Uh, let's do that. Two cosine theta. Okay, guys, these make circles. Cosine theta puts a circle on the right-hand side of the graph. Okay, so two cosine theta actually just makes a circle here. Right? Okay, five sine theta. So what do you guys think that that one is going to do? Okay, well, if I put uh, five sine theta. Now, if you're doing this by hand, you would make a table. Let me show you guys my table. You'd plot zero. You'd plot pi over six. Okay, we plot pi over four, because it's like root two over two. We plot pi over three. Okay, we'd plot pi over two. And we would start plotting every single point. It takes forever, but you can draw these graphs, all right? Or you can just kind of have an idea of what they look like. This one, sine is uh, up on the top. It's got a diameter of five. Okay, and it just goes like this. Okay, that's five sine theta. There you go. All right, so those make circles. Those make circles. Okay, my next one, rose petals are my favorite, you guys. If we put a number out front and a number in the inside, right? So let's take a look, three cosine two theta. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna go three cosine two theta and graph it. Okay, it's going out to the three, so clearly that's what that does, three. And it makes this beautiful flower with four petals. So three cosine two theta goes out to three. And let's see, it goes, and it draws these petals in like a different order than I'm drawing them. But these are called rose petals, okay? Look, if I change it to so two, two in front of theta gave me four petals. If I change it to four, you're going to get eight petals. You'll see when I draw it. If I change it to six, I'm going to get 12 petals, okay? So if it's an even number, you get double that number of petals. Now, the next question wanted me to do four sine three theta. So like four sine three theta. So it still makes a flower but this one actually only has three petals, okay? And that's kind of the way that it's gonna go, and it goes out to the four. All right, these are called rose petals. Okay, and basically what happens is, so the number in front tells you, makes it the flower bigger or smaller, right? So it goes out to the three or the four. If it's an even number, it has double that many petals. If it's an odd number, it just has that many petals. So three will have three, five will have five, seven will have seven. Okay, that's how those work. You can mess around with that on the calculator if you want. Limasons, which I always think of as lima beans, because they kind of look like lima beans. Okay. Um, two minus three cosine theta. Let's go to that one too. Two minus three cosine theta. Okay, this is a limason. 
This limazon has what's called an inner loop. All right, has an inner loop. Let me go ahead and draw this. There we go. <laughs> okay, so it looks like that, and it's actually over a little bit more like that. That's called the inner loop. All right. Switching to sine and cosine, by the way, orients it either like vertically or horizontally. So that's two minus three. Now, if I do a sine of, let's just stick with these numbers real quick. Uh, three minus three, just look real fast. This makes uh, a heart. These are sometimes called like cardioids because they look kind of like hearts. Or limosons, because they look like lima beans. This one does not have an inner loop. And then if I made this ratio instead of a two or a three, let's say I made it a four, this would have an indentation. Right, it doesn't come all the way in and make an inner loop. Okay, so we didn't have to draw those, I just want to show those to you. All right, the next one was three plus three sine theta. Okay, so it's sine, so it's gonna flip up to the top there. And because those numbers are equal, it's gonna make like a, a heart. Although every time I say it's a heart, everyone's like, no, it's not, it's a butt. Okay, well, whatever. No inner loop on that one. And that has to do with the ratios of those numbers. If that's smaller than that, there'll be an inner loop. If that's bigger, there'll be an uh, indentation, like a dimple on the outside. Okay? And this, just because it's fun. Well, it's r squared, so to graph that, I don't know, I think I'll have to do r is the positive square root of 9 sine 2 theta. And then down here, I think I'll have to do the negative square root of 9 sine 2 theta. Ah, very cool. Ooh, very cool. So it made an infinity once with the blue and then once with the red, but it made an infinity symbol like kind of sideways, I guess, on here. And that's a lemniscate, I guess. Okay. Do you need to know the names of these things? No. Uh, this just tells you a little bit about polar graphs. So anything cosine theta or sine theta just makes a circle. Uh, by putting an N inside, you make rose petals. Lima songs go like A plus or minus B. It talks about the inner loop and stuff. Okay. Anyway, let's look at, ooh, this is getting long enough. Okay, we got just two questions here. Let's look at these two questions. Find the equation of a tangent line, y minus y1 and x minus x1. All right, you guys. Well, first of all, I need to figure out what x is and what y is. So like, um, if x is r cosine theta, so x is going to be 2, 1 minus sine, cosine, because I'm taking that r over here and I'm plugging it in, okay? So x is 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta. It's probably like the easiest way I'm going to write that, all right? Um, okay. Let's go ahead and find y. If y is r sine theta, then y is r, nope, hold on, r is two, one minus sine, sine. So y is uh, two sine theta minus two sine squared theta, okay? So I have my x and y points. Now, um, by the way, this is at the point, this is r is 2, theta is 0, all right? So x is going to be 2, and then cosine of 0 minus 2, and then sine 0, cosine 0. Well, the sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to 0 off that whole thing. And 2 cosine 0 is 2 times 1. So the x coordinate is 2. Okay, over here, y is 2 sine of 0 minus 2 sine squared of 0 
which is 2 times 0 minus 2 times 0, which is 0. So, so far, for my uh, equation of my tangent line, I have y minus 0 equals something x minus 2. Okay? Now, I have to find dy dx. But here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to give me a ton of room here. dy dx is the same as dy d theta over dx d theta. Okay? Same thing with like parametric. So, d, let's go from here. Nope. Sorry, that has the zeros plugged in. Let's go from here. Okay? And let's go dy d theta is going to be, okay, the derivative of y with respect to theta 2, derivative of sine is cosine. And then this is going to come down in front. That's going to be 4 sine cosine. All right? And when I plug in, theta is 0. 2 times cosine is 0 is going to be 2 minus 0. So that's dy d theta. Okay, dx d theta. So let's come to this one right here. Oof, this one's going to be a little more annoying. dx d theta is going to be 2. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And, I more room, put it down here. and then I have to do a product rule. Oh, good heavens. I'll include the negative with it. So derivative first, second, and then first, and then derivative of the second, which is negative sine theta. But again, you guys, at theta being zero, uh, that's going to go to zero, and that's going to go to zero, and it'll be negative two times one times one. Okay? So, if dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta, oh shoot, dy d theta was positive two, dx d theta was negative 2, it's negative 1. Woo, that was crazy. That was very crazy. Okay? All right. Um, okay, so last one. Uh, find the points at which this graph has horizontal tangents. I'm trying to get this out of the way. Oh, come on. Now, you guys, a horizontal tangent is going to be where the derivative equals zero, right? So, horizontal tangent, derivative equals zero. Okay, and we know, guys, derivative, we're going to get dy dx. Well, we know that dy is, dy dx is just dy d theta over dx d theta. And maybe you guys will remember... But when the top is zero, I have horizontal tangent lines. Gives the derivative of zero. When the bottom is zero, I have vertical tangent lines. Okay? If we look at this equation right here, 2 minus 2 cosine theta, let's take a look at this, okay? Um, all right, uh, 2 minus 2 cosine theta. All right, cool. So there's a limason. Looks like a heart-looking guy. Goes out to like negative four. Okay, perfect. So this looks like this. Oops. This is great. All right. Guys, how many horizontal tangent lines do you think it's going to have? Like, I see probably one right there and one right there, yeah? I'm thinking it'll have two horizontal tangent lines. And uh, vertical tangent lines, I see right here. Again, I'm looking at, like, probably two. Okay? So, let's knock this out real quick. Okay, so first, this is R. And let's do uh, dy d theta first. So if y is r sine theta, and this is r, then y is 2 minus 2 cosine theta times sine theta, which is 2 sine minus 
two sine cosine. Dy d theta is, okay, so the derivative of this is going to be two, derivative of sine is cosine. This is going to be a product rule, which will go derivative first times second minus first two sine theta and the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Okay? Um, so I have two cosine theta, and then if I factor out a negative two, I have um, cosine squared minus sine squared. All right? This is a bunch of like, really nasty trig stuff basically that you can do to try to solve this okay um bleh. okay i'll go through this really quickly you guys might not get this but all right yeah do i actually even want to factor that out maybe not maybe not hang on a sec i'm going to go ahead and leave this as minus two cosine squared plus two sine squared and this sine squared is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared, okay? Because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so I have to use a trig identity to solve this. So I have 2 cosine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta plus 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta. Well, when I put this all together, I get negative 4 cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta plus 2. And I have to solve that. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative 2. So I have 2 cosine squared theta minus cosine minus 1. And then I can factor that. You guys, I know this is tricky. We haven't really done enough trig minus plus equals zero, and I need to solve this real quick. All right, y'all, so we get this down to this point, and it's like basically, oops, okay, cosine theta is going to be negative a half, and cosine of theta is going to be one, okay? And that's going to happen. Well, cosine is negative. Okay, so first of all, cosine is a half at pi over 3. But cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So that's 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. And cosine is 1 when theta equals 0. All right? And so those should be my uh, tangent lines. Okay? My, what did I just solve for? Uh, horizontal tangent lines. All right? And, okay, in order to find the actual points, so if that's theta, um, I have to go back into like the x coordinate and the y coordinate, okay? I will do that in a second. This problem is getting way longer than it should be. Okay, x is our cosine theta, so x is. 2 minus 2 cosine theta cosine theta. So that's 2 cosine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta. And then I have to do dx theta, which is derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then this comes down in front. So that's 4 cosine. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And this, I can factor out, well, let me do this first. Negative 2 sine theta plus 4 cosine theta sine theta. I'm going to factor out a 2 sine theta, and I'm left with negative 1. And if I factor out a 2 plus 2 cosine theta, which, when I solve this, I'm looking where does sine equal 0 and where does cosine equal half. Well, sine is 0 at like 0 pi. Cosine is a half at pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So these are like the theta values, okay? Oh, my goodness gracious. So now I would have to go back into 
here to find the x coordinates of all of these and back into here to find the y coordinates of all of these okay by plugging that in so like for example um uh, 2 pi over 3 if i plug in 2 pi over 3 there there and there okay i end up getting um yeah i ended up getting like a radius of oh actually i don't have to plug it in for x and y i can put my radius in terms of r theta so if i'm going to plug it in that right so it's 2 minus 2 cosine 2 pi over 3 is a half, looks like 2 minus 1, anyway, so you can figure all this stuff out, right, my points end up being, I'll just tell them to you right here, 3 with 2 pi over 3, and 3 with 4 pi over 3, okay, so my circles are at 3 and 2 pi over 3, 3 and 4 pi over 3, and then this one, my circles are at, if I plug in all these different points, like 4 pi, 1 pi over 3, 1 5 pi over 3, okay? That last part's a little tricky, but anyway, this video is getting long, so hopefully that's good, and we'll talk about more in plus.